This is the data entry portion for drawdowns. In this video, we will walk through the process of creating and approving a drawdown voucher. The best way to learn IDIS is to get hands-on practice. I want to encourage you to log into the UAT version of IDIS and enter the data as you follow the video. You can pause the video at any time by clicking the pause button in the lower left hand corner. You can switch back and forth between this video and IDIS by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and then pressing the Tab key. If you're not already logged into UAT, pause the video and do so now. Make sure that UAT appears at the top of the screen. If you do not know how to access the UAT, there are directions at the bottom of the IDIS login page and also in Module 1 of this course. If you want to follow along in your manual, we will be in Chapter 5. We'll start at the home page of IDIS. To create or approve a drawdown, we will click on the Funding Drawdown in the Navigation menu. The system will, by default, show the first page of Activity Funding. To get to the drawdown screens, look to the Module menu on your left. Under Drawdown, you should see links for Create Voucher, Search Voucher, and Approve Voucher. If you do not see one of these links, it means that your user profile does not have privileges for that function. If you need to change your system privileges, you need to work with your local IDIS administrator. For the first portion of this exercise, we will create a voucher. On this page, we will enter the activity numbers for each IDIS activity we want to include on the drawdown voucher. The first two fields, Voucher Created For and Activity Owner, should both default to the grantee, which for most CDBG grantees is correct. The third field at the top is Requested Submission Date. If left blank, this will default to the date that the voucher is approved and sent to LOX. Grantees can postdate this field so that the draw request is not sent until a future date. This can be useful to schedule a known future draw when the staff authorized for drawdowns will be out of the office. In the next section, you will enter the IDIS activity ID for each activity you want to include on the draw. If you do not know the IDIS activity number, you can click on Search for Activities to find them. The search page is just like others you have seen in the system, with the exception that this search will only return open activities. For the purpose of this exercise, go ahead and select two or three open CDBG activities by checking the box in the Select column for each. When finished, click Add Selected Activities to return to the previous page. You should now see the fields populated with the IDIS activity numbers you selected. When ready, click on Continue to move to the next page. On this page, the system will display each activity selected and provide you an opportunity to enter a draw amount for each. The first section will provide information for the first activity selected. It will also list each funding source where the activity has a balance to draw. In the Drawn Amount column, enter the draw amount. If you included more than one activity on the voucher, you will see a list of the other activities in the next section. To enter draw amounts for the other activities, Click the Next Activity button and enter draw amounts until all of the activity numbers are listed in the Entered row. If for some reason you cannot draw funds for an activity, the most likely cause is that there is a zero balance to draw, the system will automatically place it in the Invalid row. If you are creating a drawdown within 90 days of the close of your program year, you can mark the drawdown as a prior year draw. By answering yes to the prior year draw field, you are indicating the cost was incurred in the prior program year and should therefore be included in the prior year's reports. Using this field has important implications for public service and planning activities which are subject to obligation caps. Once you have put a draw amount for each activity, click the Confirm Voucher button. The third page gives you a final opportunity to review the information you provided before creating the voucher. If something is incorrect, click Cancel Voucher. Unfortunately, you cannot click back and correct only one thing. You will have to start over again from the beginning. If everything looks good, click on Generate Voucher. 
Once you click Generate Voucher, the system will create the voucher in the system and will assign it a voucher number. Processing a voucher is a two-person job. One person must create it and another must approve it. The same person cannot perform both functions. An easy way to provide this information to the person who needs to approve the voucher is to print the page. The next video will cover the process of approving a drawdown voucher.